So today, guys, we're going to talk about 10 different facts that you may or may not have known about video games in general. And we're just going to hop right into it. The first one I have to bring up because I tell this to so many customers that walk into the store and it blows my mind on how many didn't actually know this in that because people think that you need the backwards compatible PS3 to play older games, which is true. You need that one to play PS2 games, but all PS3s play PS1 games. And a lot of people don't know that. Oh my God, shut the front door. So if you didn't know that, now you know. Now you got a whole other library you can play on your PS3. I just thought that was interesting that people didn't know that. But Dutch, which, which one you got for me? Well, I, I came across this and I thought it was kind of interesting just because of the whole controversy attached to it and all that. But it turns out that E.T. for the Atari 2600 sold a million and a half copies, while Space Invaders only sold a million copies. E.T., can you say that? Can you say E.T.? E.T. E.T. <laughs> Which means that E.T. for the 2600 outsold by half a million space invaders. That blew my mind. That is, because the, the rumor is about E.T. is that supposedly, I mean, we've all heard the stories, but supposedly like they spent so much money buying the rights to play E.T. or to build a game E.T. and they spent so much money on promoting E.T. that they didn't spend any money on development. And that's the whole reason why Atari went under. But that's interesting that they, which makes sense because if they spent that much money on advertising and buying the rights to the game, that they probably did sell more than like a top tier game. Like, would you say uh, Space Invaders? Sure. Yeah, that I'm is thinking interesting. Thinking about it, it does really make sense because if 1.5 million copies were sold, that explains why so many people were frustrated by it. Yeah, I mean, they spent 20 to $25 million just buying the rights to right. make the game. We found an intact E.T. the video game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> E.T. is definitely here. That's pretty interesting. Um, next one I got is Golden Axe for the Genesis was actually voiced by Death Row inmates. I'm not gonna elaborate on that, but I did try to verify it and there's like four different sites that I went to and they all said the rumor is, but I thought it was worthy enough to actually, um, to voice in this video. And that being said, Dutch has something to add to that. I do have something interesting to add to that. It turns out that the bad guy's death screams in Golden Axe were digitized from screens used in Rambo First Blood and Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> Which, that's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. That is actually really cool. The next one I got for you guys, which actually blew my mind, this one. I want to go home and try this after we film this. But if you name yourself Zelda in the original Legend of Zelda for the Nintendo, you can skip the first quest. Legend of Zelda! Legend of Link! That blew my mind. I was like, <laughs> that's kind of like figuring out the Konami code for the first time, or the Contra code, or the, the Gradius code, whatever you want to call it. But I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, speaking of the original Nintendo, it turns out that South Korea had a ban following World War II on all of Japan's cultural imports. Mm -hmm. And so, it, in response to that, Nintendo actually got in touch with uh, Hyundai Electronics and had them sell their products in South Korea. So in South Korea, they actually had the NES, but it wasn't called the NES. It was called the Super Convoy. Or no, it was called the... Yeah, I think it was the Convoy. The Hyundai Convoy. Hyundai Convoy. The was... Super Nintendo was called the Super Convoy, and the Nintendo 64 was called the Convoy 64. You know what blows my mind even more than that is the fact that Hyundai has an electronics company. It does, yeah, it's a little weird, <laughs> isn't it? I didn't even know that. Not all lives have been touched by Hyundai Electronics. But most have. That's pretty cool, though. Um, oh, this one I found interesting. I'm going to have to read a little snippet here for you guys. So supposedly, or supposedly back in 2008 presidential election, uh, Barack Obama purchased ad space in 18 games that ran in 10 different states. The vote for change billboards were in Burnout Paradise, Skate, Madden, and many more targeted at the demographics of 18 to 34 year olds. I thought that was interesting. And I'll throw up a little picture on the screen of one of the billboards in here. But you can see, I think this is Burnout uh, Paradise. You can actually see 
the voteforchange.com ad in there. Um, that, that was a clever way to do a presidential campaign, if you that ask me. But and still, I never saw one of them. Yeah. How do you today. feel about that? Do you right? think the president should be in our video games, too? I mean, the government's everywhere. <laughs> what else you got, man? Um, similarly scary fact, as the government being in our video games, it turns out that the Dead Space developers got their inspiration for the Necromorph from studying car wreck victims. They're studying photos <laughs> of car wreck victims. That's I have a, nothing else to say about that. That's a brutal job. Yeah, right? I, don't, I don't really want to. I mean, we're trying to keep this as friendly, or friendly, sure. family friendly as possible. So yeah, I don't. That's, oh man, there's a, yeah, whatever. See you on the next one. It's the game so far.